There are new developments tonight in several big Trump cases, and I have a lawyer on hand who is breaking some news. The video you may have already seen glimpses of, although it broke just today, is Donald Trump under oath, this never-before-seen video, new today in a clash that came from a legal case where, and it's important to remember the context for all the cliches we hear about Donald Trump's delay tactics and strategy, Donald Trump fought this and lost this. The video you see on your television screen is something that he spent a long time trying to avoid, but he lost and cooperated with this New York Attorney General probe. And here's what he said at the start. Anyone in my position not taking the Fifth Amendment would be a fool, an absolute fool. I respectfully decline to answer the questions under the rights and privileges afforded to every citizen under the United States Constitution. This will be my answer to any further questions. As for the second part of what he said there, fact check, true. This is a right afforded to people. We will get into that. A.G. James drew these answers from him in what is a civil probe into his finances. This tape is from August. Trump had infamously, memorably, and now hypocritically attacked others who availed himself of this same right of pleading the fifth. He went from that to himself pleading the fifth over 400 times across apparently four frustrating hours. I decline to answer the question. Uh, the 2019 statement of financial condition contained false and misleading valuations and statements. Is that correct? Same answer. You knew at the time it was finalized that the year 2019 statement of financial condition contained false and misleading statements. Is that correct? Same answer. In preparing the 2019 statement of financial condition, uh, Mr. Weisselberg and Mr. McConney worked at your direction and followed your instructions to inflate asset valuations on the statement of financial condition by employing false and misleading assumptions. Is that correct? Same answer. It went on like that and on like that and on like that for four hours. Now, we could have taken a quarter of that, 25 percent, for tonight's hour and just played it endlessly. But we are not going to subject you to what the former president was subjected to. In other words, what everyone thinks of the process and the way that some people around Donald Trump, and including Donald Trump, have excessively used the Fifth Amendment to avoid answering questions, it is still the rule of law. It is still something that he fought, was fined, and then eventually had to show up for. That's not the only thing he has to show up for right now. There is a barrage of legal headaches, criminal probes into the coup, into the classified documents, signs in Georgia that the DA is directly saying some more indictments are coming, whether it's of him or someone else, we cannot tell you. Um, but we know that the DA, which has spent over a year down there investigating a Trump-related probe with a special grand jury, has discussed the idea of announcing new indictments imminently and using that as a reason why she couldn't release more information. In New York, the DA is now convening a grand jury looking at Trump's campaign finances and whether he broke the law in a case long thought dormant, the hush money payments to Stormy Daniels from back around the 2016 campaign. Prosecutors reportedly have begun presenting that case. The New York Times broke that story and two employees at Trump's company as well as campaign officials and a National Enquirer ex-official testifying. You take it all together and on the one hand you could say, Ari, I feel like I've seen and heard this before. Okay, he had to testify a little bit, but he didn't really answer the questions. And Stormy Daniels, that's an old one. And we hear a lot about classified documents everywhere. And you might say, just wake me when it's over. Show me when something happens. And that would be fine. Indeed, that could be a mood, a vibe. It's like watching a movie and you say, I might just fast forward to the end sometimes. You can feel that way. Then there's the reality of our system of rule and law. And the rule of law takes evidence, it takes a process, it takes fact-finding, it uses a very high bar deliberately. And that is the middle of the process we're in. Whether all of these things will eventually lead to more indictments or not, I can't tell you that. But I can definitely tell you that just as Donald Trump ultimately failed to duck the cooperation with the New York Attorney General, and just as many other people failed, like Lindsey Graham, to duck cooperation with the Georgia probe, there's a lot of stuff rising. Now, as promised, we turn to a very special guest we haven't had in a while, who is, well, the man of the legal hour right now. Former federal prosecutor Ellie Honig is the author of a new book, Untouchable, How Powerful People Get Away With It. 
and he's one of those authors who's kept some information in the barrel long enough <laughs> that there are news articles being written about what was in your book, which is why you're here right now. Welcome back. Great to see you, Ari. Thank you so much for having me. We, we have nothing to talk about, right? <laughs> nothing nothing yeah. happening in the legal world here. Uh, I'm going to get into what's in your book, but first, the point about the fact that James won that round and he lost. Yeah. Um, does that matter, or what do you say to the sort of the cynic that I m imagined or channeled here who says, well, show me the money? It does matter, Ari. I think, I think you hit the nail on the head. This is the result of our process. Letitia James, the attorney general, served a subpoena on Donald Trump. He fought it in the courts. He lost. And you know what? He went into that room, he sat in front of the camera, and he testified as one must. Now, he took the fifth, and you're exactly right. Anyone has the constitutional right yes. to take the fifth. It was humiliating. I think that's clear. You can see the way the former president is reacting. But he has that right. And I think he's also right when he says in the beginning, his quote is something like, in my position, only a fool wouldn't take the fifth. He's right, because he does have various criminal investigations swirling around him. And legally, it's important to know this. Taking the fifth there does have some consequence for him. Of course, that cannot be used against him in a criminal case. That's standard Fifth Amendment. But under New York law, those invocations of the fifth can be used against him in a civil suit where the jury can ultimately presume the worst. And Letitia James, you know, will use that to her advantage. Yeah, and that's where when he says, oh, only a fool would not take the fifth here, the question then becomes, oh, are you the person who knows what you did? You did so much that you think it's better to take the embarrassment, as you call it, a potential humiliation, than tell the truth. We have one other moment we want to play from the deposition. Take a look. Anything you say in this in, in this examination may be used in a civil proceeding, and that could include a civil enforcement proceeding or a criminal action. Uh, uh, do you understand that? I think. Um, is that a yes? I don't know what I did wrong, but uh, the answer is yes, I do understand. That goes to your point, yeah. um, and what are many different proceedings, I mentioned some, you've also explored this idea that some prosecutors looked at Trump on what might be called lower level offenses, including the Stormy Daniels case, and said, oh, he's going to get in trouble for bigger stuff, so we should, what, drop it? Yeah, so uh, first of all, I can't believe we're back at the hush money payments. When you and I met four or five years ago, this was the lead threat. And now it's back because we're learning now that the Manhattan DA, that is the county level prosecutor here mm -hmm. in Manhattan. I should say Alvin Bragg is a friend of mine, a former colleague, who's now the Manhattan DA, is now presenting evidence about these hush money payments to a grand jury. And Ari, as you know, if you're a prosecutor presenting evidence to a grand jury, you are nine-tenths of the way to an indictment. Yeah.